Hi, this is ROC Boss. Today we're going to talk about the victory of the ROC army in the Second Chinese Civil War, the victory of Kuomintang. After the victory in the Second Sino-Japanese War, the Communist Party, under the leadership of Mao Zedong, launched a total war against the national government led by Chiang Kai-shek. After the victory of the Communists in the three major battles in the mainland, as well as the Battle of the Yangtze River, the Communist Party of China gained control of the mainland. The government of the ROC began its retreat to Taiwan. The People's Republic of China was declared in Beijing on October 1st, 1949. The PLA captured Guangzhou on October 14th, and the government of the ROC once again moved its capital to Chongqing. Although the ROC still controlled a large area of land in the southwest of the mainland, the PLA had set its sights on Qinmen, which sat a short distance from Xiamen, and tried to take advantage of the situation to capture Taiwan and cut off the last possible retreat of the nationalists. Yi Fei, the commander of the 3rd Field Army of the Chinese PLA, decided to use his 28th Corps and 29th Corps to attack Kinmen. Yi Fei appointed Xiao Feng, the deputy commander of the 28th Army, to take full responsibility for attacking Kinmen. The 3rd Field Army believed that they could easily capture Kinmen, securing a victory for the Communists that would springboard them to Taiwan. At this time, Chiang Kai-shek, who still had control of the national military, knew that the ROC were to remain in the fight, but Taiwan would offer a significant geographical barrier from the mainland. After the Battle of Xubeng, Chiang Kai-shek started to concentrate nationalist efforts on a withdrawal of the remaining Central Army, as well as the Navy and Air Force, to Taiwan. This followed by moving materials and resources to Taiwan. As Taiwan's most offensive frontline position with the mainland, Kinmen naturally became a primary target of the PLA's efforts to take the islands of Taiwan. At this time, the PLA was still made up of primarily land assets and was not prepared for an amphibious landing. From June 1949, Chiang Kai-shek had taken General Li Luangguan, 22nd Army Group, to the now fortified Kinmen. The Communist 25th Corps were dominated by the Nationalist 22nd Army Group, also present with the 201st Division of the Youth Army sent from Taiwan. In addition to infantry, there were 26 M5 tanks from the 1st Battalion of the 3rd Tank Regiment. This was the main force of the National Army to defend Kinmen. Worth noting was the presence of famed Chinese war hero of the Second Sino-Japanese War, Hu Lian, who was the commander of the 12th Army Group and also assisted by the Xiamen Security Commander, General Teng Enbo. The 12th Army Group came from the Chaoshan area of Guangdong to support the defense of Kinmen. The 12th Army Group was defeated by the 3rd Field Army in the Battle of Shubeng. It could be said that when these forces arrived to face one another, their eyes blazed with intense hatred from a history of conflict. The 12th Army Group began to arrive in Kinmen on October 8th, while they were arriving the 31st and 33rd Regiments of the 111th Division, 18th Corps, were dispatched to Dadeng Island, and Xiamen, respectively. They were sent to assist General Tang in Bo to resist an offensive from the 3rd Field Army. On the evening of October 9th, clashes broke out between the 31st Regiment defending Dadeng Island and the 40th Division of the 25th Army and the Communist Army on Dadeng. The two armies fought until October 10th and the final result was the NRA voluntarily surrendering Dadeng Island and returned to Kinmen through Xiaodeng Island. This skirmish was followed by the Battle of Kuningtao. Xiamen fell on October 17th. Before retreating, the NRA ordered the Ministry of Defense Technology Corps to destroy Xiamen's port facilities and ships. This would prevent the PLA from capturing any of the ships or using the port for a future assault against nationalist positions, most notably Taiwan. The PLA's first offensive against Kinmen was set in motion. At this time, the PLA ships could only carry 9,000 people ashore. However, the 3rd Field Army still loaded a lot of RMB and desks onto the ship, preparing to establish the People's Government on Kinmen after the victory in the war. The PLA originally planned to land on Chongling and Longkao. After the landing, the PLA would divide the whole of Kinmen Island into two fronts. The main force of the NRA was concentrated on the right side, on the Taiwu Mountain. The PLA planned to use the 244th Regiment of the 82nd Division of the 28th Army, to wipe out the besieged National Army troops on the left side first. When the 201st Regiment and the 253rd Regiment had landed, the PLA would attack and destroy the NRA military base on Taiwu Mountain. The PLA believed this plan could capture Kinmen in one fell swoop, but suddenly there was a violent gust on the wind on the Taiwan Strait when the PLA was making its crossing. It caused the PLA's boat groups to deviate from the intended landing zone and landed on Kuningtao Beach instead. 
On the afternoon of October 20th, the M5 tanks of the 1st Battalion 3rd Tank Regiment were carrying out a land combat exercise alongside the 18th Corps. Among them was three M5 tanks, number 65, number 66 and number 64, which happened to have been repaired on Kooning Tau Beach. Around this time, the 244th Regiment was deviating from the intended landing site and instead landed on the beach. The three tanks immediately turned their guns to shell the confused PLA forces. The number 66 tank hit the 244th Ammunition Command Ship, which triggered a massive explosion on the beach and started the 201st Division. The Battle of Kooning Tau had officially begun. In the beginning, many of the NRA's bases in the Bay Area were occupied by the PLA 244th Regiment. However, when the 18th and 19th Corps of the 12th Army Group joined the battle, the PLA fell into a rather brutal meat grinder. Chen Dun Shu, one of the commanders of the NRA, was killed in the fierce fighting. He was the first battalion commander to have died in the battle. The fighting between the NRA and PLA lasted until the morning of October 25th. Both sides were exhausted at this point, however the NRA used the advantage of the Navy and the Air Force to attack the PLA landing force. The Republic of China Air Force B-25 bomber and Mosquito FB-26 fighter bomber cooperate with the Chinese Navy vessel Zhongrong alongside the 101st Submarine, 202nd Minesweeper, the Nanan gunship, to destroy the landing Communist regiment and cut off the retreat for any surviving PLA forces. The B-24 bombers from the 8th Air Force Brigade bomb the artillery base of the PLA in Lianhe, Yangtang, Weitu, Otu and Xinjiang to offset the 244th Regiment's remote fire support. Fighting until the noon of October 25th, the defense of the 244th Regiment collapsed due to their lack of anti-tank weapons. The leader, Xing Yongsheng, tried to commit suicide with a grenade, but he failed and was captured. The other two PLA regiments also arrived in Kinmen on the morning of the 25th. The 201st Regiment landed in the area of Xibao, and Guanyin Mountain, and the most important of the regiments, the 253rd Regiment, went ashore in Ling Kuo. The 251st Regiment attacked Kinmen County, and the 253rd Regiment went straight for Kuning Tao. As a result, the 251st Regiment was violently countered by the 12th Army Group in Kinmen County. By noon, only 100 soldiers remained of the 251st Regiment. Liu Tianxiang, the commander of the 251st Regiment, decided to withdraw the two platoons to Ling Kuo together to occupy Kuning Tao with the 251st Regiment to prevent the 12th Army Group from overwhelming them. However, although the 253rd Regiment occupied Ling Kuo, Si Pu Tuo, and the 132nd Highland, it also suffered the loss of 200 men in the process. These failures led to Commander Xu Bo to consider whether or not to shrink the current area of defense for the PLA. Although the NRA's 201st Division lost a large amount of territory, it was still able to assault the Communist lines with the 253rd Regiment and launch an offensive. At this time, the focal point of the war shifted to the 132nd Mountain Highland, which sat between the Kuning Tower and Kinmen County. General Li Liang Gong ordered the 19th Corps and the 25th Corps on the 22nd Army Group to occupy these strategic locations. General Li Liang Guan transferred the 75th Mortar Artillery of the Artillery 3rd Regiment and the 42nd Mortar Artillery of the 14th Heavy Mortar Regiment in order to weaken the defense of the 253rd Regiment positioned upon the high ground. In order to save their fighting strength, the 253rd Regiment was ordered to withdraw troops from the Guanyin Mountain Kuwei Highland and 132nd Highland. The PLA also set their command center in Baishan Zhang Lao and prepared to face the 12th Army Group. The NRA started the offensive against Lin Kuo and Kuning Tao in the afternoon of October 25th. The 19th Corps counterattacked with the cooperation of the 201st Division. The NRA faced a tough battle as a result. Li Guangqian, a battalion commander of the NRA 19th Corps, died by artillery shelling while assaulting Lin Kuo. However, the PLA still relied on the remaining forces of the three regiments to block the offense of the 12th Army Group. Therefore, the PLA fiercely guarded the position of Kuning Tao. On the evening of October 25th, the PLA decided to send two companies of both the 246th Regiment and the 259th Regiment of the 28th Army in order to reinforce Kinmen. Due to an insufficient number of ships to escort the transports, the second echelon of the PLA invading force suffered a severe blow as soon as it had landed. On the morning of October 26th, the escort destroyer of the Republic of China Navy, Taikang, arrived off the coast of Kinmen, 
to assist the assault against the reinforcing PLA transports. Assaulted from three sides by the NRA, Li Huan Bin, the deputy commander of the 246th Regiment, was shot on the beach. However, the PLA reinforcements did eventually reach Kuning Tao and join the 251st Regiment. The two regiments launched an attack on Kinmen County once again, but were blocked by the 201st Division of the National Army in Lin Kuo and Pu Tao. At the same time, the Ministry of Defense Technology Corps was dispatched again to the area. They decimate the PLA fishing boats and waterboards, which were left on the beach. This cut off the PLA's retreat. Seeing the last defense of the PLA pushed back by the 201st Division, General Hu Lian, the commander of the 12th Army Group, immediately ordered for the 18th Corps to launch a counterattack against the PLA forces in Kuning Tao. The 18th Corps generals, in cooperation with the M5 tanks, took back Lin Chou on the morning of October 26. They then concentrated their forces on capturing the two PLA bases in Nanshan and Beishan. While the 14th Division of the 19th Corps attacked Nanshan, the soldiers of the 353rd Regiment of the NRA 118th Division, 18th Corps, attacked Bai Shan Yang Lao, held by the 253rd Regiment using the cover of the M5 tanks. Nine M5 tanks charged the 253rd Regiment lines outside Bai Shan Yang Lao and crushed the PLA line of defense. Huang Jing Xin, the first company commander of the PLA, attempted to launch a suicide attack on one of the M5 tanks with a grenade. As a result, he was wounded by an M5's machine gun and captured by the infantry of the 353rd Regiment. Fighting continued until 5.30 p.m. on October 26. The defense of the PLA in Baishan Yang Lao had completely broken and the defense of the 253rd Regiment collapsed completely. The NRA 18th Corps swept through Kuning Tao and Ning Kuo in the evening, disarming, capturing or eliminating the remaining troops of the PLA in the area. On the morning of October 27th, the third batch of PLA reinforcements arrived and was captured by the National Army as soon as they reached the shore. The Battle of Kuning Tao concluded with the victory of the NRA. However, Liu Tangxiang, Xu Bo and Sun Yun Xiu, the three leaders of the landing PLA forces, had not yet been arrested. The battle had not fundamentally ended as a result. Liu Tangxiang was arrested on the morning of October 27th, Sun Yun Xiu led the remaining soldiers to resist the Nationalists until October 28th. He and his soldiers were wiped out by the 18th Army on the Xuangru Mountain. Sun Yun Xu was unwilling to be captured by the NRA and chose to commit suicide. As for Xu Bo, he was captured after a long game of hide and seek, lasting 100 days on the island. The Battle of Kuning Tao officially ended here. The entire PLA army was either captured or annihilated. None of the PLA forces were able to withdraw to the mainland, although the Battle of Kuning Tao did not prevent the defeat of the ROC's government on the mainland. It did display the ROC's government would successfully defend the Taiwan Strait from this point onwards. The capital of the Republic of China moved to Taipei on December 7th, and the two sides of the strait formally entered the state of confrontation across the sea. However, the victory of Kuning Tao was still a great morale boost for the government of the ROC, who had recently lost aid from the United States. The support wouldn't return until June 25th, 1950, as the United States began to support the ROC once more with the outbreak of the Korean War. The situation in Taiwan and the strait gradually settled down. Do you like our content? If so, please remember to like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to support us and enable us to continue producing content about the Republic of China in the future, then please feel free to donate using the link below. And thank you all very much for watching.